don't want to be shown, um, just uh, stop your video. And I'll trim out this beginning portion. So even if your um, video is on now, it won't be on as soon as we, you have to turn your video off and then, um, yeah. So just turn your video off if you don't want to be on is what I'm trying to say. For those of you who are in the witness protection program. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I always take pictures at these things, but I, I don't like to be in pictures myself. So I always ask people, do you want to be in the pictures? Do you want just your hands, maybe? Oh my. If I'm the judge, it's my artwork. Did you see it up there? It's upstairs. Well, the little artwork oh, that you guys did. It's upstairs, yeah. Um, hi, Shannon. Welcome. All right, Christine, uh, if you're ready, I'll start. Sure. Okay, I'm ready. So, folks, um, can everybody hear that needs to hear? Everybody who's virtual, can you hear okay? Yes. Okay. Um, and can you got the folks who are here in person? Uh, Christine, can you say something? Okay. Hello, everyone. You hear that, right? Can yes. <laughs> you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so, I'm going to mute myself mm -hmm. now. Um, okay. But. Um, I just wanted to welcome everyone. This is Annie from the Booten Homes Public Library. Um, first of all, I would like to give credit to Ali De Caesar, our youth <laughs> services librarian, who um, moonlights as technical uh, assistant here, and she made this link between my laptop and our smart TV happen. So thank you, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm going to turn it over to Christine, who will tell us a little bit of, about herself, her um, passion here, and her business. And then she's going to go right into um, needle felting or snowy owl. Thank okay? you, Amy. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Christine. I'm a uh, fiber artist, and uh, I'm a teacher too. Uh, I teach at the art school at Old Church in Denmark, in Bergen County. And I also teach a lot of uh, workshop uh, by um, libraries and um, some uh, adult school too. And I even uh, I have some class for children and some events. Okay, and um, does everyone see this video, right? I cause I let me see. Yes, I I spotlight this boy one. Okay, and um, Neil Felton. Um, how many were you the first time for needle voting? If you are the first time, okay, let me just quickly go through what you have to take care, you know, during this arts and crafts, because we use the sharp uh, tool. We use felting needle, it's pretty sharp. Um, okay, so let me move to this camera, okay. Oh, before that, um, let me just quickly to introduce my 40 pass, um, Woody Pets, I have a Instagram, I have a Facebook, I also sell some fel uh, needle felting kits, I designed them myself and on um, Etsy, uh, so if you uh, still have time to purchase, uh, you want, still want to purchase some uh, gifts uh, for the holidays, you can check out my Etsy store. I have a, a variety of uh, uh, needle felting kits, all designed by myself. and. Um, so I, I have a uh, color photograph step by step to give an instruction how to make the, uh, the, the, the animal or the figures. All right, so, and if you want to uh, follow me, please uh, find Wordy Pass. That's double, uh, two L L, okay. W-O-O-L-L-Y-P-E-T-S is my account. All right, so, um, Today we're gonna make this guy, the snowy owl. You know, like the head weight. <laughs> in the movie, you know, you guys know that, right? <laughs> All right. So in your package, 
you will see a felt two felting needle and um, um and one of this page and two tiny eyeball i put that in a tip into this pack okay and then of course some wool that's you was uh, seeing your package so uh felting needle we use the felting needle as a tool and the needle is pretty sharp we use gauge uh, 38 it's medium size and um, this is good from start to the end and what we do is because there's a zigzag by the edge of the this felting needle and we call we call this um barbed needle this is the tool to interlock the ship wall from this fluff into this tight object because when we use this felting needle to put poke into the wall and pull out from the wall repeatedly and it will lock interlock the ship wall together like entangle it now together so the more you poke it through the more the much firmer it will become like this so you always sprung up and down a little bit angle is fine but keep in mind the same direction into the Fiber, you have to be you know, same direction out. Never pry like this, all right? And or use different direction because you gotta break the needle. Okay, this is the first thing you have to take care. The second thing is in order not to poke yourself, always keep your belted needle away from your, I mean, the other hand. Always keep it like at least um, half to one inch away when you do poking by this spot your hands shouldn't go that close you're gonna hit yourself so you have to away from the felting needle and when we do felting which means we have to use this needle to poke through the whole object all over so most of the time you will up and down up and down but you have since you have to felt it all over you have to rotate keep rotate then you can feel all over so how about this side you have to turn go to this one some people like to go if they felt this spot they just do horizontal and i will say no for that action because you will never know how deep this it will the needle go so always if you want to feel on this side you just turn upwards and from the top like that that's very important and do not hold on the hand and felt if you're confident that you won't hit yourself you can do that if you're not it better do it on top of the felting foam so the felting foam is the working surface you always have to put this stuff i mean the whole fiber on top of the foam that's very important because you don't want this felting needle hit the table and break it okay all right, so I think basically this is the most important thing you have to take care. Um, yeah, I think we can start it from, first of all, let's take out the fiber. That's all ship wool. And um, it's been carded, washed, and fluffed. And then we have to separate this wool into three portion, three even portion. You just be gentle. See, it teared off, right? Never use scissors, okay? Never use this to cut. Because we like the fluff, uh, the fringe. Because once we use uh, the felting needle to poke through the fringe, it kind of entangle well and uh, make the felting process go faster. So keep in mind, never cut the ship wall. Use your hands manually, be gentle, separate. Okay, now we have to separate into three piles. So you have to make sure three piles, similar amount. Uh, probably not accurately, but you know, at least they are similar size. You can use your um, hands to see, to touch, 
make sure um, if this is a little bit too much, I will take out a little bit from to here. Okay, and this pile. Okay, this pile. Oh, since you guys are home, if you have a hand lotion, let's go get some hand lotion. This is fibrous kind of, you know, it's very hard to handle if your hands are pretty dry. So let's put some hand lotion on. It's easier to work on handle this wool. All right, so let's first separate into three pile and make sure they are similar size visually, you see. Okay, after this three pile, um, take away two pile, set it aside. Just leave the one pile, okay? This pile, we're gonna um, make um, two wing, one tail, and the, um, the ring, or you know, I call this gaggle of this owl, and some poof punk on top, the, the eyebrow. So this we have to separate into three. Okay, let me repeat it. At the very beginning, we have three pile, right? Even size. And let's move this two pile, set it aside. We're not using it now. Okay, so this is the pile we're gonna to do it. So for this pile, we are going to make two wing, one tail, and two gaggle, and some puff eyebrow. So first of all, we are going to separate one, two, three, like this. A little bit more for this pile. Okay, one, the portion is one, two, three. Why? Let me show you. Okay. The one, a small portion, will apply the goggle, the eye goggle, and the poof, or any patch later. So you don't need that much, just a little bit. So that portion one is for that. And the big pile is for two wings and one tail. So Let's make this big pile into three. One, two, and three. Okay. So this three, let me take this uh, gaggle and whatever, the small pile away, so I won't confuse myself. All right, so I have a three bigger pile. Everyone follow? If you not follow, I can repeat it from the very beginning, it's fine. Okay? Because I don't want to confuse you guys. <laughs> it sounds very confused, right? A lot of pile. Christine, how many, how many piles should we have made from that one pile? That's not just the one. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. From the yes, very beginning? From the very beginning or... Um, no, from after we divided it into three even piles. Yes. Okay, okay. So how about this? One, two, three, four. Let's do this. That, that might be easier. Okay, so four. take your one small piece and divide that yeah. into four. So we have four. That one means okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yes. we originally Got did it. it to three and then take that one, one. and divide it into four. It. All right, thank okay. you, Christine. No problem. So now <laughs> if you have Remember, we have a two big pile, and the 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 one we separate into four. Then you are correct. You are on the right track. Okay, got it. So let me put this away. All right. Next step, because we are working on the wing, I will need you grab some scissor. Let's cut out this template. Today we're going to start from the wing, so you will cut it out into like this shape. So let's grab some scissor and um, cut this template out.
All right, so everyone have this template. So only two wins, right? So let's take two wins. Okay, two pile, two small pile. That's win, okay? Let's leave one. Because we, we can only start working one at once, okay? So now, got this pile, let me separate them into smaller, make the fiber shorter. How to make it shorter? You just separate them and stack on top of each, like that. Oh, if you see anything that belong to the fiber, for example, the small black or um, yellow stuff, first, just take out use by your finger. Do not pry with felt needle, okay? You're gonna break the needle. So now, I only leave one small pile on top of the phone, and I place my template on the phone, uh, on top of this, this, this layer. And then I just secure, I use my finger secure, and I use felting needle, be gentle, follow this template to felt, lightly needle felt um, indented online. I can turn a little bit the ball. When you hit the paper, it's fine because you won't break your needle, so don't worry. Because now I'm going to make an indentation of outline follow this template. Okay, let me take out to see. Oh, yes, I can say, look, it's an indented outline. Okay, if you have that indented outline, you are on the right track. All right, let me take away this. After you have it, the indented outline, you can take out, I mean, take away the template. I will wait like 30 seconds of these steps. So this is the first time you do this indented outline, you probably will be careful. But you know what? This just gives um, yourself a guide. So you don't need to do that you know, detail. Because as long as you can see where the line is, then that's that's okay, you know. So after you have this indented line, then you can take away this template. And now I'm going to fold in the loose wool inwards. Follow, follow this indented line, and I will lightly poke and fold in the other side. Okay, just fold in. So you will uh, create the like a teardrop, the shape. Both the other side in. Then I will lightly poke. Now it's pretty fuzzy. So you can lightly poke, lightly poke until you secure this teardrop. Don't worry about the age, okay? We're gonna fix the age later. Okay, since this shape secure and it's it's still fuzzy, but you can be gentle to peel it off. I don't want you guys to feel too much, otherwise you will attach to the phone. You probably have a hard time to peel it off. Once the shape is secure, you can gently peel it off and flip to the other side. And let's keep working on the other side. The more you poke in, you will see they get harder and harder. And, um, Oh yes. Pardon me. Um, hold on. I think we missed something. Which part was it? We wanted to um, explain one. Which part again? I don't think I got it. Okay. Just, we're just really we're just behind. behind. We're much yeah. further behind it. Okay. We're going a little slow here. Oh, okay. No problem. Let me slower than you. Yeah. Okay. Let me slow down. 
Okay. Sorry, I walk faster, so I. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not in person. So... <laughs> Just remind me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So now I like to pop this teardrop shape. Okay. For the edge, you can have 45 degree angle to fill the little bit the edge. Be careful because this is it's small. You have to be very gentle. Okay. I turn my built-in foam so I can fill the, the bottom. Just like that. And don't forget to flip to the other side and keep working on it. This um this wing is still a little bit fuzzy, but that's okay because since we have to attach later, we we don't want to completely felt it. As long as it's, as long as the shape secure, and um, I think it's pretty firm. Still a little bit fuzzy. That's fine because that's a wing. It's, you know it should be fuzzy. <laughs> if you finish the first one, and then you can move on to the next wing because we have to make two right let me show you again the steps i grab the small keep in mind small okay small pile do not touch the bigger pile okay we we'll still work on the small pile okay, let me split and stick on top because i want this fiber shoulder or sometimes you can crisscross make like a, a mess like that okay Keep it flat, I mean fuzzy. And if it's too, way too fuzzy, you can use your hand just to hang it down a little bit. All right, and then I place my template and then do exactly the same step. Needle felt this template. I just make indented outline. I follow this paper. To if the pile you separate them not same amount um i mean one pile may be way too thick way too i mean more than the other pile then you're gonna um come up with um two wings different size some one may be way too thicker than the other so that's why i say when you split the fiber try to make them as even as possible Okay, I make indented outline for the second wing. And then take away the template and I just fold in and poke a little bit. Fold in, follow that line, okay? You can see that line. A couple poke and fold in. Okay, let me do this side. For this step, you don't need to poke that deep. Just be gentle, just hit a little bit on the fold. You don't need to poke that you know, way too deep. Because this is like two dimension. And then I peel it off. Flip to the other side. And I keep working on this till the second wing.
And in the meantime, before I finish my second wing, maybe I can take my first wing to see are they the same size. Oops, seems it looks like my first wing is bigger than my second wing. Okay, now I have to rescue my second wing. I'm going to stretch a little bit. Okay, try to make them the same size. That's better. Even you use the same template, it's still a little bit different. You know, when you manually to make the first one first, I mean first wing and then second wing, it still look different. It's very hard to make two exact the same size because um, this two pile you uh, to make the first one and second one probably not the same amount and it um, the fiber uh, the amount of fiber actually would determine how thickness uh, it the result. So if you have the same problem like one is bigger than the other or you can keep popping I mean the first one to make it smaller you know to match the second one you can keep poking the edge and then it will shrink I, let me show you how to poke the edge you have to be a little bit angle the felting needle and push into the edges but keep in mind the same direction in same direction now and lighten pop it through and you will shrink a little bit Okay, for the wing, you don't need to completely felt it because later we're gonna attach to to the owl. Um, if it's completely felted, you probably will ha um, have a hard time to attach. So let's just leave still squishy. Then it's fine as long as the shape is secure. Then all right. So now I have a two wing. All right, so let's put away. Anyone follow? So far, so good, right? Two wing, right? Okay, so now we can put these two wings away. All right, remember we still have a two tiny pile, right? Let's um, not touch that two little pile. Let's make the the body of this guy. So grab. Remember, we have the very beginning, we have a two big pile, right? We are, we are going to use this two big pile first. Only one pile first. Because now we are going to um, make sure it's um, a long strip and um, the width about two inch wide. About two inch wide. Okay, so now I'm going to roll, like to roll it up. You don't need to roll it up tightly enough, just like to roll it up. And then I will just secure a little bit. Use my felting needles to felt to come in poke the connected area and then connect it. So now it's look like a very tiny pillow, right? Very tiny pillow, about two inch wide pillow. Yes. And then I grab my other big pile. So you have to make sure the first, this pillow is about like two inch. 
um, horizontally like two inch. Okay, if it's longer than two inch, mm -hmm. you have to push. You see your finger since it's still soft. You have to push. Make sure it's not wider than two inch. Okay. I don't count the fluff of by the edge. Okay. And then remember we have a the other big pile. So I'm going to place this big pile. Roll it on and I mean roll it on, on outside as another layer like this. But since the inside already set, so we just add a volume to the outside. Okay. So now it's kind of get more volume it getting bigger i mean more choppy but still two inch because we just add one more big pile of layer okay so now i'm going to secure the connected area All right so now everyone have this now it look more like a cocoon All right so this is the body it's about like a before I felt it's like two, two and a half inch wide because there's some fluff on yeah, these two sides. So now first, since I already secured it, I, I have, I, I, I don't felt it yet. I have to turn grip because I'm going to sculpt the top into like a rounded shape. That's the top hat and here is the bottom. So let's start from the head first. For the head, we are going to make it rounded like a doll. Okay? So now let me show you. I will push surrounded edge, the brain, a little bit angle, I mean the felting needle. To push in to make rounded shape. I turn, I keep turning. Careful, you have to poke lightly about like uh, less than half inch in. Do not poke that deep, okay? Well, because we sculpt the top head, you just push in quarter or less than half inch in. That's good enough. Do not push way too deep. So lightly pop, because we are going to sculpt the top into like a rounded, like a dome. And still fluff. But since, yeah, after you poke a little bit, you look more like egg shape. And then I'm going to start to work on the body. Before that, I think we have to make the bottom flat. So um, this is top hat, I will flip to the other side. And the same thing, um, push in about quarter to a half inch and just flatten the bottom. So no brainer, just keep poking through, that's it. But not deep, just half inch at most. So if you pop, you hit the phone, which means you hit, you pop too deep. I want to change. All right. So now I secure. I can start to work on the body. Now lightly pop the body. Don't forget to rotate when you pop it through. Lightly pop. You probably not hit the, the foam, but that's that's the correct. You know, we don't want it to press way too deep. And we have to lightly pop in until it um secure the whole shape.
All right, so now um, this cocoon, this body is still squishy, but at least it's felted, I mean, secure the shape. And now next step, we have to, yes, very nice, I saw it, okay, two small pile, okay? Just grab one pile, and we are going to create the eye, because there's two gaggle okay like it make two donut so you don't need uh, much for this steps so grab one pile but we probably will not use the whole thing okay just very small streak like this I will have I need two two tiny okay too tiny, see? It's like a feather. That's good enough. And then we are going to remember I asked you guys to put lotion on the hands. Now we need, you have to have lotion, because otherwise you probably have a hard time working on this step. Because we are going to put this into your hand, and I'm going to use my hand. Just um, give a pressure to roll it up. See, if you have a lotion on the hand, it's easier. Give it some pressure. See, make it like a noodle. Make a noodle. Make sure this noodle is tight. So give it a little bit more pressure on it. Like this. Not fluff, okay? If it's fluff, which means give it more pressure. You guys have a dinner, right? <laughs> so. Okay, now this is my first noodle. It's like the same thing to make the second noodle. So you don't need that much. If your noodle is pretty thick, let me show you. If you grab too much, your noodle will be too thick. Let me show you. This is no. Okay, your noodle should be like very small. Okay, all right. So let me continue the noodle. Make sure these two noodles are similar, similar to size. Alright, so I have two noodles and I'm going to make two donuts, like two gaggle for this guy. Here's the dome on top, the head, that's the head. So, hmm, first of all, you have to center it, you have to make sure. You have to know where the beak is. Okay? So here maybe the beak here. So how about that? Let's do the beak first so you can center it. Grab a little bit black. Very tiny. And use your finger to fold into a small seed. Like a watermelon seed. Alright, even smaller. And you twirl around use your finger. You don't need to use belting, you just twirl around use your finger. So hand lotion is very important. <laughs> okay, so like this, seed like this. And I place this seed. Here is the beak. So now I'm going to push this this beak already felt it. Uh, your finger if you push down to the center you probably have a hard time to attach see i push in the center i take out i couldn't pop it through so pop by the edge you can easily pop it through so this is the peak
Okay, and secure the beak. Now it's the donut. Grab one noodle. Um, just by the side, start by the side of um, the beak and secure one end. And now I'm going to make the round like a donut. Like this. And overlap, right? Just overlap on top. Right? And then I push to secure. Do not flatten this donut, okay? You need some um, thickness. It's like a ring by each side of the beak. So this is my first echo. So I have my first goggle. I'm going to make a second one. The exact same step. Just secure by you now the beak. And then I start to make a circle. And just turn. Just felt the needle to secure in the middle and then keep to turn it back and overlap. It's fine. Make sure these two circles similar size. You don't want one eye is bigger than the other. But it happened, you know, just let it happen. It's okay. <laughs> it's natural. Just a similar size. Alright, so after you have two gum, you can tuck in some yellow. I just grab small piece, so small by small, it's easy to tuck in. Otherwise, the way to fuzz is so hard. So maybe I just fold, fold into like small square, then tuck into the middle of this circle, 
and felt it. Right, I feel, I actually feel, uh, make the same level as the ring. So if it's not enough, you can grab a second piece of the yellow. For this detail, you have to poke um, lightly. Do not poke too deep, just lightly. It's easier to sculpt the detail. Follow the same, the first, like, first eye, I do another piece of yellow and then tuck into the other circle and I just felt it. So it looked like two sunny egg, right? No problem so far, so good, right? For this two gargle. Well, next step a little bit hmm, challenge because we need to um, give a, a eyeliner. If you guys know how to, you know, make up, very probably familiar with this eyeliner. And now we are going to give this guy a very subtle eyeliner because I don't want to give this guy, you know, way too smoky eyeshadow. It's very, you know, tiny uh, piece. Let me put this eyeliner. See, like a line, very small. Right, and I. Using my finger, just keep twirling to make it not that much fuzzier, you know. When you twirl in your hands, it's felt a little bit. Okay, now it's like a line, very small. Hmm. Now let's do this eyeliner. Eyeliner will follow this yellow, like yolk, just beside. I just follow the page. It's a little hard for me. Okay, like this. Be very gentle. Do not poke too deep. Okay, like this. If you grab way too much of this piece, it's gonna cover almost all over, and you, you probably won't see the uh, later. We're gonna attach the the uh, eye, and you probably everything's. Black. So I said, this eyeliner is very important, very thin and fine fine line. Just push it. Follow the side of the this circle. Okay, for this step, we can use scissor because if you have excess. I will recommend you scissor to cut, okay? To trim it. I will give you more time for this step. If your eyeliner fail, you know, too thick, you can take out and redo it.
How's the eyeliner going, everyone? <laughs> A little bit challenge, right, for this step? Because it's very hard to do the eyeliner. Ah, nice! You know, every time I do my eyeliner, right, my hands kind of shaking. So it's very challenge. I think this is easier to work on the needle well. Eyeliner for this guy. Okay. It's okay if you really have a hard time to work on this eyeliner. You can do that later. We can, you know, attach the eyeball first. So let me show you how to attach eyeball. Okay, the eyeball, uh, the position of the eyeball will determine the expression, the facial expression of this little guy. If you have a, um, make these two eyeballs um, by, the, by, um, by, the, by the side, it will be like crossing the eye. If you place eyeball up on top, it will be like a look up. You know what I mean? So it really um it would it, it would you know determine the final have this guy facial you know let me show you if this guy look crossing eye i will attach eyeball by very close to the beak I would keep poking into a hole and I tuck in my eyeball. So it look like this guy's looking. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean? So if I don't like this, I take out and maybe this guy wanna look up. So I just keep poking into a hole and then tuck in eyeball. So you will look up. Hmm. Which way I should put it on this side? If you look up, I put this one here. Okay. Look up. Hmm. Which way is easier? Uh, maybe do the closing eye. Yes. Okay, let me do the closing eye. Oh, you can press where, where, wherever you want it. Now, up to you. You just dip, poke it through a hole, and then you tuck in this eye. Okay, later when you finish this project, um, 
use Elmer glue or take it glue take out this eyeball and dip a little bit on the rod okay the glue and then hook through back then it will attach well if this only only um tool i mean only material not wool so you have to use glue to secure it or it will fall out easily okay so now i have eyeball and then remember you how much left you have probably you have a little bit and one pile too um we just need to have this left for the last thing just okay. you just need this for a little for maybe less okay for the eyebrow okay keep this for the last and then grab the other pile and whatever you have left over a small piece take out a small piece this for the tail let's do the tail I still have some um, safe for a uh, patch okay so first of all you need a tiny bit for eyebrow very small you know this is very small and then a small piece for the tail and excuse me Anne uh, Christine I'm Anne yes <laughs> um, if you could back up to yeah, what after the eyes after the eye oh okay yeah thank you okay so the eye are you want me to repeat the eye no no, no, no after. After. yes thank okay. you all right so now whatever you have left over is how um i just have this for the leftover i have to separate them into a couple of things first I take out a little bit for the eyebrow. Okay, that's the eyebrow. Actually, we can apply the eyebrow now. Let's do this. That might be easy. Just a tiny bit. And I separate into two. Okay, and I fold it in half. Place on top. Here. And then I just push in and leave it fluff it's my first eyebrow and the second same thing i will fold in half i fold in half and i will push the folded area into my felting needle push the folded area in the center and leave the fringe out Whatever you want to have um, your proof eyebrow. Okay, so now I have okay, let's do the eyebrow first. You don't need to attach them all, you can leave the rest of fluff that'd be cute right i think so i like like crazy scientist so i just secure this So now you have this guy, the crazy eyebrow. All right. So now you still have some left over, right? Grab a little bit, very tiny amount. We are going to make the tail. That's enough, okay? Because the left over would do the baby. Okay, let's do the tail first. 
small piece I'm going to fold into a triangle let me show you triangle you guys know what triangle look like right <laughs> so I will use my melted needle center uh, vertical center line and then I just fold in by the side holding by the side so it's triangle like that you don't need template because you guys know how to fold into a triangle pretend this uh, fiber is like a piece of paper and you fold it into a triangle if your triangle pretty long okay for example your triangle like this pretty long you have to fold it back because you don't want that uh, tall triangle you don't you don't you want to have a short triangle and like to be oh, that's the tail okay, flip over to off the other side this tail is probably just one inch do not over one inch you don't want a huge tail All right, so now I have well now I have a tail. Let me show you how to attach the tail. Take out this triangle. Let's assemble them. I place them almost close to the bottom of the back, like this. Let me show you that slide, like this. Okay, like that. And then I just push in and it attach. Excuse me, Christine, can you hold up for a moment? Let okay. Thank you. Thank you. Christine. All right, you guys let me know when you when you caught okay. it. Here's a tail. Let me hold it right here. But one inch, right? That's mm -hmm. five inch each. <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt the edge, the button. Okay, so the tail a little bit, I can push it. By my hand, right, so just to secure the body. And then here's the look at the bottom. I'm not just saying, it was a lot of rain. Okay, so you're attaching uh, just part of the tail, it looks like. Yes, yes. Okay. Just the wide part. Just the wide part? No. Um, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So I mean, like, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. That Someone here did it the other way around, so they have a beaver tail now. <laughs> but they're all beautiful. So you have the tail, tiny tail. And now, grab whatever you have the left over. Okay? We are going to um, get a little some um volume for the tushi and for the tummy okay <laughs> so i will do either one piece or two pieces together i would separate into two pieces small by small be easier so the first piece i will add on the tummy okay keep it Make it more choppy. So I just cover on top the tummy and <laughs> uh, we'll go all to the side. So let's secure by the side. Okay. So the tummy is bigger now. Okay, go all the way this side. So now this guy has a big tummy. Now, why is that shape so cute on a snowy owl? 
but not on me. <laughs> So I use one piece to cover the only the tummy and the other piece I will patch the tissue the back. Okay. It will overlap. Remember you um we just attach part of the tail right onto the bottom and this piece will overlap, kind of blend from the um back to the tail okay you can it would you have a line a gap when you attach the tail to the body now this piece will cover on top so it will find okay any any um extra just fold onto the front it's fine so these two pieces will add the volume for this guy get more weight Make it more choppy. And then after this two piece, remember we have a very beginning with like a two wing? Almost forgot, right? Now it's time to attach the wing. For attach the wing, you can have the pointy um, down, or you want to have the pointy up, up to you. I, I will have my pointy down like this, and it will attach by the side. So here's the from the front okay and then when you attach i will recommend to just push by the edge from the wing to the body like that if you push from the center you probably take out the whole wing so that the, the edge will be soft and easy to felt so let's do this Let's attach another way. You can attach them all, or you can leave it open on the bottom, I mean the wing up to you, okay? So after this two wing attached, next step is kind of freestyle. What I mean is, you can. Uh, we are going to make the feather, um, the dot. 
And how many? And how big? Up to you. Um, I would recommend small piece space. Just grab. And you can have gray. I gave you guys gray and uh, black. You can arrange them as you like. So I just grab very tiny. And remember, we always like to twirl around into a small like a seat. Like that. And then you just push into the body. And that's big. I want a one, um, one gray and one black. So do not grab too much, otherwise the seed will too big. One black. The first row I will be three. This and one gray, one two gray, one black. And on the other row, maybe I will apply four seed. So this the fader. So now your job is to give a lot that, and then that's it. I think that's the most easy part for this project, right? Each dot, try to make them similar size. Small is better. You can create a lot of dot. Besides the tummy, you can uh, put the dots on the wing.
So I make some dots on each side of wing. So if your dot is pretty small, then you have to um, make it more. If your dot is too big, you probably won't. Um, maybe just three or four, then that's enough for one wing. Smaller, I think it's it's better. I know you guys still working on the wing, the dot, and um, in the meantime, you can keep working on the the, the dot. I'm going to show you if you want to um, make a loop to hang this guy up uh, on t as a decoration on the tree or on the mantle or whatever, or as a gift. Let me show you. You just you keep. You guys keep working on your. I'm going to show you how to sew. Okay. I will have like twine, or you can have, use ribbon. Okay, and then make a loop. Right. So it's a loop, and. Um, in my oh, just regular sewing. Use regular sewing needle. Okay, regular sewing needle. And my shrimp shrimp. Well, actually, I don't need to give a knot at the end. You can't see me show you. I'm going to sew this loop on top, right? So I'm going to push in and out, right? And then go through the loop. And oh, it depends. Hold on, you do it again. I have to adjust the way I have. To. I'm going to locate. Okay, I'm going to be here. Good. So let me do it again. Okay. And now I just tie. Tie a knot so it will secure the loop on the top. So just tie a knot. Maybe double knot. Okay, one knot. Second knot. So that can help with the. Alright. So you secure this loop on top, and you can hang on whatever you want to. Okay, on your mantle, on your tree, or maybe as a gift. All right, let me keep working on my dot. Excuse me, Christine. Yes. Do we put dots on the back? Well, up to you. I would put some on the tail and a little bit on the top 
the four, I mean top hat. Just very subtle. Maybe Thank some you. gray. Maybe some gray color. Ah, I'm some gray color. Maybe. Just a couple, just maybe three or four on the tail. And maybe you can make it smaller, the dot, when you... Oh, so 
Okay, so for those of you who are still on virtual, um, I don't know if you saw the message, but Christine, it looks like she lost one of her connections, but she said we finished the snowy owl. Um, very nice. If you guys wouldn't mind um, sending a picture to the registrations email at Wooten or whatever email at Wooten. Um, and I'll put pictures up at the uh, on, on Facebook and social media and whatnot. Does anybody have any questions? Now, I do want to remind you that this is recorded, so it'll go up probably after Christmas on the YouTube library's YouTube channel. And I'll try to remember to email everybody who signed up so that if you want to go over it or if you need to make or, um, oh, here's Christine again. You need to make a nut, uh, make the other okay. wing or something like that. Hi, Christine. Oh, there she is connecting back. Did anybody here have any questions for Christine? It looks like she's connecting again. I don't think so. No. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Jeannie, um, if you're talking, you're muted. Sorry, thank you, Christine. Shannon, show us what you did. Thank I know you did those lovely Christmas trees. Oh, oh nice. Your yeah. eyes came out great. Thank you. This is my my husband was doing it off camera and he freestyled. Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, that's yeah, this is mine. He's a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so Looks much. Looks like an angry bird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for attending. Have a wonderful night. Stay safe and cozy tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you after the holiday weekend. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Annie. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.